what is going on guys so you know what a really complicated topic is to talk about enlisted promotions and, and that whole process well in this video I'm gonna do my very best uh, to give you guys the download on that all right so I've got about three pages of notes here uh, for this video I don't normally have that many notes I might have a few talking points or whatever but this is one of those that I want to get right one of those that I'm gonna look at army regulations and actual documentation and stuff so of course links will be in the description for more information if you want to know some real specifics or if you want to look into the cool weird details on things that I learned a lot whenever I was researching this so what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm going to cover enlisted promotions in more detail for the E1 to E4 or E2 to E4 and then also I'm gonna cover E5 and E6 promotions and then E7 to E9 I'm gonna kind of just kind of briefly cover that because that's not something that you guys really need to worry about anytime soon I'm just gonna kind of throw it out there okay so a few quick things that I want to hit and get out of the way whenever you're talking about promotions in the army on the enlisted side and that is that the army every year they're gonna have um, basically some numbers that we need to hit for the strength of the army in general the army is gonna be like hey we need this many sergeant majors e9s we need this many you know e8s e7s e6s or whatever that's kind of what they want to do and then they're also going to go throughout the all the different MOS's and be like okay you know we need you know for 25 series 25 Bravo 25 uniform you know infantry guys they're gonna kind of outline how many people how many soldiers that they need for all the different areas in the army so that's gonna have a really big effect on you whenever you're looking to get your promotions and it doesn't really matter too much whenever you're E1 to E4 that's not really that big of a deal and I'll cover that in a little bit but once you get to the higher ranks whenever they're really kind of looking at that and they're not one to over strengthen certain areas then it could slow you down or it could help you get promoted a lot faster in your military career so that's just a couple things that I want to point out right out the gate and then with that so if the army has let's say a thousand slots for i don't know sergeant major or whatever well in order for somebody to get promoted to sergeant major now that sergeant major has to retire and then a master sergeant or a first sergeant can then get promoted so that's how it works you have a lot of people up at the top, or a few people up at the top and if you want to move up there has to be a vacancy for you to be able to move up they can't just create positions all the different units in the army they're going to have essentially a list of all the different MOS's that that company that unit whatever can have and then all of the different ranks that those soldiers can be and you don't want to go over the limit so if you're in a unit you're wanting to get promoted to E5 sergeant and you're in a certain MOS and your unit does not have a vacancy for that then odds are you're gonna be probably waiting a little while even if you're eligible you're probably gonna wait a little bit longer than you should um, whereas if somebody in the same situation there is a vacancy in the unit then yes you could just go ahead and get promoted um, after all the stuff that I'm gonna talk about here in a little bit now there's three different kind of tiers in which you can get promoted on the enlisted side you have your decentralized promotions you have your semi centralized promotions and you have your centralized promotions which is e2 to e4 promotions e5 to e6 promotions and then you have your e7 to e9 promotions so decentralized semi-centralized and centralized promotions and what that basically means decentralized is that your unit right your specific unit that you are in is going to have control over you getting promoted now that's for the E2 to E4 ranks. Basically, your unit commander is going to be the deciding factor on you getting promoted, whether or not you get promoted on time, which I'm gonna throw up some uh, little picture right here for the, the different time and service and time and grade promotions um, for those E2 to E4 ranks. Time and service just starts whenever your time and service date is on your LES, you can check that. It's on every single LES. If you're curious, for active duty soldiers, it starts the day that you ship to basic training. And then for reserve and guard soldiers, it starts the day that you swear in at MEP. So it can be before you actually go to basic training. And time and grade is the time that you've been in that specific rank or pay grade. So with these decentralized promotions, it is completely automatic, right? It is completely automatic. You do not have to do anything except for just not getting in trouble. Essentially, as long as you don't screw up royally, then you're going to get promoted to E4 as soon as you meet those time of service, time of grade requirements. And you can also get a waiver from your commander 
to actually get promoted faster than that and I'm gonna put a picture right here one interesting thing that I do want to mention whenever I was reading the regulations on this is that those time and service time and grade requirements that I've threw up here those are for active duty whereas reserves and National Guard there is no really specific time of service and time and grade requirement kind of a case in point for that Technically, whenever my unit promoted me to specialist, I did it because I did something good. I won um, the Soldier of the Year board and I won the Best Warrior competition for the command level. I entered into the Army as a PFC and E3 and then somewhere around maybe 11 months of time and service, I didn't even meet the time and service requirement, I was promoted to specialist because of those you know, accolades or those uh, competitions and things that I've won. So that is one thing I do want to mention for these lower ranks, especially winning boards, winning best warrior competitions, performing exceptionally well. You know, if you just do good at your job, that's just what you should do. But if you, I guess, perform exceptionally well, your commander might uh, waive your promotion and actually promote you a little bit early. If you're in guard and reserves, it could be even earlier. So I was a specialist. So because of that, my commander waived uh, the time of service, time of grade requirements for me, and I got promoted pretty darn quickly. All right, so that's it for the easy stuff. Now we're gonna get into the little bit more complicated promotion process. And that is whenever you are an E4, a specialist or a corporal, and you're looking to get promoted to E5, or you're an E5 looking to get promoted to E6. It's a completely different process because it is not automatic. You're only automatically promoted to E4. Once you're trying to get that E5, there's some additional things that you have to do. Initially, honestly, you have to be number one eligible, and you can look up eligibility requirements if you want to, if you're curious, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, there's the, this document that I was, and I'm doing this video is like 160 pages. So I'm kind of condensing it down a lot. But you do have to be qualified. You gotta have your APFT score and everything. You gotta be green on everything. You have to finish your SSD1 training, which is like some online training. And I'm just gonna throw this in here right now so I don't have to reiterate it later. But for every NCO rank that you that you wanna go to, E5, E6, and higher, there is a um, self-development course online that you will, you will um, take it. It'll probably take about a day of solid work, but that is a requirement for you to actually become eligible and then another thing that I want to mention that is from E4 to E5, E5 to E6 and the other NCO ranks is there are these courses that you have to go through BLC, ALC, SLC which is basic leader course, advanced leader course and senior leader course so those are some things that I just kind of want to throw in there right now again you guys can do a little bit of research but I'm trying to give you guys the gist of promotion so there are going to be these courses that you have to go to um, that are about roughly a month long or so, especially I think BLC is exactly a month long. I'm not 100% certain on how long SLC and ALC is because I've never really had to deal with that, obviously, because I'm an officer now. But I do want to throw that out there for you guys. You have to do those in order to be eligible for your promotion. You can't no longer in the Army be promoted to an E5 sergeant without having gone to BLC. Um, now you have to go to BLC and you have to become eligible before actually getting promoted and that is true for all of the other different ranks. Now that I got that out of the way, E5, E6. So this is where you're going to start getting those promotion points and this is where it's going to actually become a big deal of you trying to get points and trying to be promoted in the primary zone or the secondary zone. Essentially what that means is every time a promotion board comes around you have soldiers that are in the primary zone and you have soldiers that are in the secondary zone. Being in the secondary zone is actually good. It gives you a chance to get promoted earlier. If you're in the primary zone, that essentially just means that you are eligible, you've got all the points that you need, um, and you're kind of you know the next in line to get promoted. There are several different ways in which you can earn extra points, and that's some of your basic soldiering tasks, which is scoring high on your APFT. There's different scores and extra points that you can get for that. For your marksmanship, shooting expert at the range, that's gonna give you a certain amount of points. You know, getting different medals, AEMs, things like that. That's why going to these boards, you go to the board, you win the board, you might get an AEM, you might get a certificate of achievement, which are all promotion points, which will help you meet that threshold in order to get promoted faster, right? So doing these things, high PT score, your different medals and decorations and stuff that you're going to earn. And then additionally to this, just being a good soldier because I didn't actually know this until I was reading the regulations and stuff because again, I wasn't enlisted for forever but your commander is going to be able to award you some promotion points. They're gonna be able to stack on a few extra promotion points depending on how well that they judge your, your military bearing, your leadership skills, and all that different stuff. So being a good soldier, 
in general is going to more than likely allow your commander to easily be like, yeah, this person deserves, you know, all the pretty much the promotion points that I can get them. And then again, the more promotion points you have, you're going to get in that primary zone and secondary zone. So the next big hurdle for you to jump over is the promotion board. So you've met your primary zone requirements, all that stuff. You're good to go. You can get promoted. You're eligible. Now you have to go to the board, right? At this board, you're going to have several different members that are going to vote on whether or not that they think you should actually be promoted to an E5 or E6, whichever one it is. And then additionally, there are also going to assign points, administrative points, promotion points for you to stack onto your total. So you're going to go to this board, they're going to ask you different questions, they're going to ask you questions um, about soldiering tasks, they're going to probably ask you just questions about yourself in general, they're going to ask you maybe to describe your, your medals and awards and what all of them are, that's something that generally happens, you're going to have to recite the Soldier's Creed, possibly the Army Song as well, but essentially it's going to be kind of like an interview process. And then, like I said, at the end, they're going to vote on whether or not you should be promoted. And if more people vote no than yes, then you're just you're just done. You're not getting promoted. But if they do vote yes, then essentially you are then in line to get promoted. And they will have like a cutoff line for administrative points because they are going to award you points. And then you're going to total all of your points, the maximum points that you can have in uh, in total, like at all is 850 points so the army is gonna be like okay now all the people that are above this amount of points i don't know 750 you guys are gonna get promoted everybody else under that sorry you're gonna have to wait until next time all right and now real quickly because like i said this is a long video it is a lot of stuff to cover that i'm trying to just throw at you guys right because i do understand that a lot of you have really probably no clue uh, or don't have much knowledge on the army you might have the only knowledge you have is the knowledge that i've given you guys through my video so just real quickly e7 e8 and e9 promotions it's a little bit different it is centralized promotions which means that your unit the unit that you're in has very little to no say in your getting promoted there's going to be these um erbs not erbs every i think six months or every year you're going to have basically people reviewing you once you get to these nco ranks and so that's going to be a big factor in these e7 e8s and e9s getting promoted they're going to basically be looking at these um documents and being like hey their senior leader their um grader their senior grader they said that they're you know they're great they're top block they're in the top 10 percent or they might look at it and be like uh they're, they, they, they're not in the top 10%, they're in the top 50%, so maybe we shouldn't promote them right now. So they're gonna look a lot at these, and that's kind of one of the main things that they're really gonna pay attention to, honestly. You know, obviously your PT scores and everything uh, is gonna take a big effect into it. Like your whole record, when you get to E7, E8, and E9, it's just like your whole record is gonna be looked at, right? Because you are then gonna be some real big time leaders in the Army, E7, E8, E9, it's kind of almost more like of an officer side people like to say sometimes like once you get to those ranks you're doing a little bit more officer stuff but anyways aside from those those documents that just are literally handwritten and, and your commander or your first sergeant whatever is signing off and saying how well you are performing top 10 percent and how you're doing against your peers that's something that they're going to take into account but aside from that it's not up to your unit whether or not you get promoted they recommend for promotion or they do not recommend for promotion but at the end of the day that's not it Another point that I want to make is for E7, E8, and E9, there are no time and service and time and grade requirements. If you disagree with me, that's just straight out of the regulations. That is something that um, I didn't know. So that's something that I learned. Now for this last little bit, uh, I saw this note here that I kind of just want to read because it probably explains it a little bit better than I can explain it. Each year, the Army decides how many soldiers within each MOS it plans to promote to the ranks of E7, E8, and E9. For example, the Army plans to promote 17 E7s in a specific MOS, um, then, then basically they say to the board, here are the promotion records for everyone eligible for, for promotion to this rank in this MOS. Please review these records and then uh, vote and select 17 of them to be promoted within the next 12 months. Now, for these ranks, you don't kind of get promoted kind of all at once. What they do is they promote a group of people every single month for those 12 months and then the board comes next year and then they promote people every single month, right? The one little point here that I wanna read pertaining to that is the Army takes all selectees and assigns them a promotion sequence number which is assigned according to seniority. Uh, for example, if the E7 is on the list, um, if it's an E7 on the list, 
the army will give the sequence number to the selectee, the lowest sequence number to the selectee with the most time and grade as an E6 each month for the next 12 months, right? So essentially for these sequences, for your promotions every single month, the soldier who's been in the prior grade, the prior rank, the longest, they're gonna get promoted first. So if you've all been selected and you're gonna get promoted, whoever's been in that rank the longest, you're getting promoted first. If you're not eligible for promotion that year, then you're gonna have to wait a year, you're gonna go to the next promotion port. So it is a little bit of a struggle. So some E6s, 7s, and 8s are really gonna, you know, really have to go for it whenever they're trying to get promoted. You know, you're gonna probably try to get college credits because college credits get you promotion board points and all that stuff. So that is something that they will look at. All right, so I did do my very best to, in as short of amount of time, kind of describe all of the different promotions and the process for the enlisted ranks in the Army. I am gonna cover the officer side. It is completely different. I'm not gonna probably go all the way up to, to general or whatever. If I do, it'll probably even be a more like summarized version of what I did for E7, E8, and E9. But regardless, I will do a video on the officer rank promotions. I'm kind of curious myself. I'm a second lieutenant. And you know, it might be a smart thing to look into this stuff because obviously I'm gonna have to deal with this in the next upcoming years, right? So if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. That'd be awesome. If you wanna stick around some more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That would be even better. Follow me on Instagram and Snapchat if you haven't already, or you can get one of my t-shirts linked down in the description down below. American Soldier, one of my favorite t-shirts here. I hope you guys have an amazing freaking day and I will see you later. Drop.